uh, all right uh, we are live uh, hey everyone i hope you are doing all right welcome back to the llm bootcamp from zero to hero in llms today we have abhishek mishra who is a tech lead and ai consultant at intel and his expertise is main about large language models and how to train these models and fine tune these models on specific uh, data set and uh, without further ado let's start with the session over to you abhishek okay so i'm uh, going i'm going to start presenting you tell me when you can see this screen okay yeah sure okay tell me when yeah. you can see this screen it's visible now okay so uh, for this specific session i have uh, created a fine tune notebook which i call the equivalent of hello world uh, hello world for fine tuning llms in uh, in the context of doing something that we want to be able to uh, fine tune for free as well as we we, uh, we want it to be finished in very little time so that you guys can iterate you guys can change the data sets you guys can also play with something else so uh, so with all those things in mind this particular notebook has been created okay so let's now first go and uh, check what do we have here the model that uh, we will be picking for this specific uh, tutorial is going to be orca mini 3b orca mini 3b is a open source uh, reproduction of the orca paper and uh, and a lot of great uh, results were actually observed in the orca paper and orca mini 3b is uh, is a replication of a similar effort by the open assistant team in 3 billion parameter range similarly uh, the orca mini is also available in the bigger ranges as well but but for this specific tutorial we are going with the 3 billion parameter Th this is a jupyter notebook that uh, that you should be able to run on your own in, in collab and uh, in this particular notebook what we will aim for is we will aim for uh, fine tuning orca mini 3b uh, the data set that we will be going for is uh, open assistant gonaco data set subset uh if you are not aware of open assistant or guanaco let me introduce it briefly uh open assistant is think of it like it's a open source effort that aims to build an open source chatbot similar to chatgpt it was something which was uh, created as a, a collision group effort between already existing uh, groups who were trying to replicate and build their own a uh, chatbot so this so open assistant is that specific group now what is guanaco so guanaco was a specific model that uh, achieved very good results when it when it comes to storytelling or reasoning or something okay and uh, this specific open assistant guanaco dataset is uh, is basically a subset of that uh, particular dataset which was used to find in the guanaco model itself okay and uh, it contains roughly around some uh, slightly less than 10000 data rows okay and the method of fine tuning that we will be using for this specific tutorial is going to be qlora qlora is essentially but uh, fine tuning your llm in a double quantized format okay for example you will have full fine tuning you will have lora fine tuning and then you will have qlora fine tuning when we are talking about something like full fine tuning okay then we are talking about two different kinds of fine tuning we are either talking about fine tuning in full uh, 32 bit format which is which we often talk about as fp32 format or we are talking about 16 bit fine tuning okay but when we say double quantization we are talking about first quantizing it to 8 bits then second quantizing it to 4 bits so uh, there was this fantastic paper by tim detmers on qlora in which he showcased that how he that how he was able to fine tune a 65 billion parameter guanaco model uh, and achieve results uh, that were 93% or 94% similar to chat gpt as per the vicuna benchmark okay so uh, with this method now anybody should be able to fine tune llms on consumer gpus and uh, this particular demo is something which is being run for free 
on uh, uh, google plus so just uh, uh, so just to step into this world of fine tuning llms this is something which can be very easily done then thanks to tim detmers and co so let's now jump into uh, basically what infra we will be using what libraries will be going through um the initial setup would uh, require us to install some libraries uh, i prefer the hugging face ecosystem when i am trying to teach something because in hugging face ecosystem a lot of things uh, are present as is and uh, and lots of latest uh, implement uh, and basically lots of latest techniques approaches methods are present without uh, concealing a lot of information with wrappers or with uh, libraries that make it very difficult for a new person to understand exactly what goes into the whole so for that transparency we will be going with the hugging face ecosystem we will be installing accelerate accelerate is something that uh, helps you do multi node training it is something which takes care of a lot of stuff for you automatically you you do not need to worry about how to uh, you do not need to worry about how to use multiple gpus for example if you have four gpus how to use them uh, different kinds of parallelization approaches exist and uh, accelerate allows you to config configure them very easily then we have pft what does pft stand for pft is basically a library which means parameter efficient fine tuning parameter efficient fine tuning uh is uh parameter parameter efficient fine tuning was an approach where it was showcased that uh, you do not need to fine tune you do not need to tweak all the hyper parameters and basically each and everything that is part of a model for example in this specific model we have 3 billion parameters right to achieve comparable state of the art results do we need to go and fine tune each and every parameter or would we be able to param, would we be able to work on just a subset and be able to achieve similar state of the art results okay so that is where parameter efficient fine tuning comes in and a uh, lora approach was also something which is part of the pft bucket itself now q lora again is implemented into pft then we have the hugging face transformers library if you have had an opportunity you work with the transform library you will understand that this is central to the entire hugging face ecosystem then we have the data sets module that allows us to uh, imp- uh, download uh, i- download import load basically something from locally or uh, by the hugging face ecosystem it is something that helps us work with the uh, data sets that we will use for the fine tuning then we have trl trl is again uh something which is part of the hugging face ecosystem it is a very good library which originally was created to mainly help uh engineers fine tune the reinforcement learning but uh it also allows very easy very simple fine tune for your llms so we'll be using that okay uh bits and bytes is something which uh tim detmers has been maintaining for a long time and it is a fantastic library that allows you to uh, quantize your llms uh, in our case we will be doing double quantization so that will also come by the bits and bytes okay now let's first uh, start this installation you may be noticing that there is one additional name here which is bond db and there is another name here inops you don't need to worry about inops mainly because uh, it, it it is for uh, performing certain operations and calculations but you don't need to worry about it because this is something which is part of uh, this was crucial with the falcon fine tuning but with orca you don't need to worry about it however bond db is something which is crucial to understand because uh, one db is weights and biases if you have heard of it before so weights and biases is uh, so weights and bi- weights and biases library allows you to very easily just visualize all your training okay if you want to see uh, how is your hardware performing in terms of temperature in terms of 
uh, how much memory you are utilizing as well as how much gpu you are able to utilize uh, if if you want to uh, if you want to monitor any any kind of abrupt failures or something along with being able to monitor your uh, training losses uh, your uh, eval losses all those things would also be available now this specific uh, so now the initial installation is done okay i'm just going to set up the uh, initial and then notebook login because i'm going to be pulling some stuff from hugging face and uh, i am going to use my access token which i'll be placing adding your access token is not mandatory for this specific data set and this uh, specific set of uh, uh, modules that you have okay but uh, when you are working with gated models then then there is something which becomes mandatory okay right now the data set that we have here is like this one is quite huge so we won't really be going with this i'll just be picking the ganako subset which is going to be very fast for us to just demo so now i have replaced uh, if you go on hugging face if you search for this you will find that this is a subset of ganako and instead of 10000 rows which would have taken a lot more time for fine tune for this demo purpose it is something which is just 1000 rows okay and uh, now we'll be pulling that information if you if uh, if you wanted to work with your own data set what should be your approach if you wanted to work with your own data set your approach should be to go to your uh, hugging face and then upload your own data set your data set can be approached your data set can be can be very easily uploaded in multiple uh, file formats the ones that are usually uh, most convenient are like json format or json l format you can also explore other formats uh let me quickly uh let me quickly show the other probably you you may want to look at the data set before we before we start the fine tune and i may have something to add there as well so okay uh tell me when my screen becomes visible again uh yeah it's visible okay okay so yeah so now uh, i'm trying to give you a view of basically what is the data set that we are taking and how does it look like it's a 967 kb data set it contains around 1000 rows only and it and it's a multilingual data set as you can see like multiple languages are present in this data set you may notice that there is only one column called text there is a specific reason for that when we are working with sf trainer it, uh, it 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 allows you to just train you uh, it allows you to train or fine tune your model in raw text format so this is this specific format is called raw text format okay where we have a single Uh, so suppose often people ask that I have heard about instruction fine tuning, I have heard about uh, alpaca fine tuning, I have heard I have heard about prompt and completions format. But if I had my own documents, how would I fine tune on my own documents? So if you can take your entire document, convert it into text format, and then split it into various uh, rows and just keep a single row, okay? Then uh, you should be able to just use SF Trainer library. to find in your model using the raw text format itself and that's also why i have preferred it because it allows you to give the have the freedom to find tune in both raw text format and simultaneously also do instruction fine tune for example you can see here let me just uh, pick one up yeah so in this specific one you can see that there is an instruction token here instruction and there is an instruction okay and then after that we have a uh, response okay so instruction got finished here instruction started here and instruction got finished here so this is llama 2 instruction format okay and after that we then have the response so this is the instruction response format 
and in this uh, instruction response format you uh, are able to find your your model very easily okay so this gives you the benefit of both if you just wanted to take a huge file split it into chunks and then be able to find your on the entire thing or if you wanted to train in a specific format if you wanted to train with this in prompt completion format even that would have been possible you would have gone here for prompt as the first section and then you would have gone for the second section of this uh, completion format okay so now that we have taken care of that let's jump to the next section and in this next section what we are going to do is we are going to load the model there is something crucial uh, when uh, that we may uh, that we may have to consider here before we start uh, as we can see that i am importing torch i am importing from transformers library i am importing auto auto model for causal lm auto tokenizer bits and bytes config auto tokenizer okay whatever is your model how do you determine whether this thing is going to be enough or you may have to change something okay in most cases these auto model for causal auto tokenizer and all should should be capable of taking care of automatically your uh, uh, so so these should be capable of taking care of uh, taking care of what you uh, what you want to have for loading your model automatically however in case it is not present then what you may need is so we go to the specific model this is the model that you want to that you are going to pull actually for each and every model there are some crucial uh, configuration data that one must be aware before working with them that crucial data is actually present in these config.json files for example if we are uh, for any model that we have to find you there are two portions that are extremely crucial okay one is uh, something that identifies the model what kind of model it is and, and, and what, what kind of library has been used another thing is tokenizer the same the same uh, model library and tokenizer that have been used while pre training must be used for fine tuning as well if you choose to uh, if you choose to replace it with any other kind of tokenizer it won't work so uh, so for that we actually Uh, care about that, and we jump and check this first of all. Okay, let's see. So this portion is what we call the base, uh, the base model part. So or what is Orca Mini 3B? Orca Mini 3B is essentially uh, fine tune over the OpenLM Research Open Llama 3B model. Okay, its architecture is represented by Llama for Causal LLM. Okay. and uh, then bus stands for beginning of uh, beginning of uh, sequence eos eos stands for end of sequence token and similarly there is some other data as well. but the crucial thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to identify the base model and we wanted to identify the architecture so that that now has been added again for the tokenizer likewise we would like to know uh, okay so this has been added in large uh, this has been added in large uh, file system format so doesn't make it very easy to view it let me yeah because this uh, okay so this is just this is the dot model one i i wanted to open the config.json yes yeah this is readable this is not as per the large file system for me okay good so here we can see again what we wanted to know we wanted to know the tokenizer architecture our tokenizer architecture is llama tokenizer okay and uh, hugging face works to uh, integrate these models as soon as they come out typically so in most cases your working with auto model or auto tokenizer should take care however however suppose you are one of those guys who is trying to start picking up a model and fine tuning the same night it, it is dropping for example this is what i usually do 
I don't I don't even want to wait for like one hour or so before I before I want to test and work with a specific model. In that case, auto model for causal causal LM or auto tokenizer may not be what you need. In this specific case, it's okay because it has now been integrated into the hugging phase of system. In case that wouldn't have been the case, then from the config.json, we will change it for Llama for causal LLM. And uh, here we will change it as Llama tokenizer as it has been mentioned here in the architecture. Next time you have to do it for yourself, you just go and check these and, uh, and ensure that if there is some error in the future where auto is not working for you, you can always go and work with the main one. The first thing that will happen here is it will first download the model. While it is downloading, then uh, I may briefly touch upon some other sections of the code. Uh, in, uh, so, we, so we are going to load the model in four bit format. So what we are doing here is we are doing double bit quant, uh, we are doing double quantization as soon as we are downloading the model, okay? Before we load, load it in the GPU VRAM, we're actually doing double quantization. For double quantization, if you remember, I introduced that bits and bytes is something that we'll be using to quantize the base model into four bit, okay? So for loading the model into four bit, bits and bytes is used. This BNB config stands for bits and bytes config, okay? And these are the parameters that we are setting based on what we need. Tosh.bfloat16 means that we will be loading the model originally in, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in BF16, but we will be doing double quantization. So load in 4-bit is equal to 4. When it is loaded in GPU, it will be loaded in 4-bit only. It adds a slight bit of delay because of the additional time it takes to quantize it, but it's also something that allows you to fine tune with much, much less memory. While this is happening, yeah, yeah, the... yeah, Abhishek. Okay, so while the model is loading, we have few questions. Yes. Uh, Sixteen bit or thirty two bit and quanti uh, quantization. Uh, how does it affect the model? So it's a question asked in the comments. Okay. So uh, essentially, think of it like this. Suppose you had two bits, zero and one, right? And you were to create all possible combinations with that. So you will say uh, the, uh, the, the sequences that I'll be able to create will be a variation of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, right? And similarly, if you had three bits, then you will have something like 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, likewise, so on, right? Each and every uh, bit length that we set there, whether it is your 32-bit uh, one, or whether it is 16-bit one, or whether it is 4-bit one, all the model, uh, all the information that has been used in pre-trained, right? We want to represent that entire information in terms of those bits. But what happens is that uh, if you say 32 bits, you're saying that almost all the world's knowledge that we had in the pre-training, because we often train on trillions of tokens. So all the world knowledge that we had in our pre-training is now uh, represented in some manner in those 32 bits. The next question comes, if I'm loading, the if I'm loading and working with the model in 16 bits, is it possible for me to not lose data? Then again, if I'm doing the same in eight bits, uh, what am I losing? If I'm doing the same in four bits, what am I losing? Essentially what we are losing here is, we are, if there is information, if the information, uh, if the models have been so densely pre-trained that we assume that, uh, almost all the, uh, that almost all the bits are being used to represent information in, in our model, then going down, uh, in the bit range is going to cost us losing all that information. Okay. But that does not usually happen. As demonstrated in the LoRa paper and later on in the QLoRa paper as well, uh, what happens is that all the information that we try to fit in in these models, usually 1% of the, usually 1% of the data 
of the entire pre-training that we that we try to compress into these models. Uh, that particular data is something which uh, automatically finds like 99% of the entire space in the model does not actually need 32 bits. It, it, it's totally fine for us to actually go and use the lower bits. Okay. And, uh, and, and with the advancements in the QLORA paper that, that Tim Detmer showed, he was able to achieve double quantization, like compress the information in four bits. As, as per Tim, uh, essentially in today's day and age, you should be able to train a state-of-the-art model. Uh, you should be able to fine tune a state-of-the-art model in just four bits as well. Okay. Uh, uh -oh. And a lot of people are also putting an effort to exactly understand the difference. Like, uh, is it really so, or is there a, or is there a loss or, or something? Uh, that's called an ablation studies. Uh, ablation studies are also going on in parallel. We won't really go down that route because it's a state of the art effort that like I'm also part of, and it is being done right now in parallel. Uh, the aim of the effort is to actually see whether there is a genuine uh, equivalence between four bit fine tuning using Fulera or uh, the 16-bit model is always going to be superior no matter how you find your using Fulera. Okay, ideally, intuitively, you should be able to say that if you are able to do full fine tuning, you should not be losing out on information. You also expect to see best result. Okay, and when you're doing with, when you're doing four-bit fine tuning, you may have to get a feel of hyperparameters. You may have to understand how to best tune your model with all those hyperparameters. And uh, and actually get results comparable to F FP60. Okay, so I hope uh, that answers the question. The model is now loaded. We... Now we are loading the tokenizer. Okay, loading the tokenizer is again basically same thing. Uh, we we are loading the llama tokenizer. Uh, and you see two additional lines here. What are these two lines? So this line is tokenizer.pad token. Okay. And uh, tokenizer.padding side is equal to write. So what's happening here? Uh, in, in the data set that I showed you previously, okay. Based on the sequence, based on the sequence length that I'm working with, and sequence length is a variable that I have here down. So max sequence length I have for this 204. What does it mean? It means is that in one go, I am putting 2048 tokens of information in the model. Okay. Uh, when these models are being fed this information, not every row is of uh, not every row is of equal tokens. Okay. Since not every row is of equal tokens, what ends up happening is that uh, when when model finds one uh, input as very short, one input as very large, it has been seen that it finds it difficult to converge its losses faster and the, the, the fine tuning or training is also very, uh, what should I say, the fine tuning or training is also something which is very unstable. Okay. So we do some additional work to make all the sequences of similar length. That is where the padding comes in. This is this is this is basically pad. EUS, as we previously talked about, is end of sequence token. Okay. And padding side is equal to write. Means because we are mostly training with English or English like languages here. So the uh, a sentence ends and uh, whatever space remains to fill the 2048 token length, that will be that will be filled with the end of sequence token. Okay, so the model would be finding some legible information. The model would uh, not really go for a very shaky or very unstable trend. Okay. Now this is how we are setting up the LoRa config, and uh, typically these values signify how we want to. Uh, go uh, how, how do we want to go to the ratio of like are, are we looking to fine tune 
all the layers are we looking to find you in a subset of the layers are we looking to uh, basically like what uh, to what degree are we going to do the parameter efficient finder okay you can see that we have picked up the library parameter efficient finder okay uh, in parameter efficient fine tuning if you remember in the beginning of tutorial i mentioned that uh, you don't need to like the idea for parameter efficient fine tuning was you do not need to work to the same extent on all the hyper parameters okay and uh, specifically in this method what is happening is so this uh, this thing is key here this is called lora rank lora underscore r rank so i won't really go go to the calculus in these things because that will be beyond the scope of this uh, uh, tutorial but i will talk about rank in terms of matrices if you are aware of what are made of what are uh, ranks in matrices you would understand that a, a a two rank matrix is something which is basically a two by two matrix a four rank matrix is something which is a four by four rank matrix okay so a 64 rank matrix is where we are saying that we have kind of compressed the model into a 64 rank matrix okay and uh, uh we are going to mainly focus our fine tuning efforts on this this is how we are going to implement the parameter fine efficient fine tuning okay uh now we will just run this it should not take too much time yes this is the part where we start loading the trainer before this part we load we first loaded the data set we we then loaded the model we loaded the tokenizer and uh then we set the configuration uh, and initially we set the configuration for bits and bytes to determine how we wanted to double quantize in four bits then we set the parameter efficient fine tuning uh, configuration okay and now we are going to actually load the train so our train is sf trainer from trl library again part of the hugging face ecosystem uh, it's a wrapper around our uh, transformers uh, from our face ecosystem and it is something which allows us to very easily fine tune models on instruction based states while i started because it will take a okay this one loaded fast next one will be a bit slower while i just start this one i will be as it takes a little bit of time we will then talk about other things yeah okay so essentially so yeah. there is one question hmm. what's the difference between qlora and lora so uh, as i mentioned previously like this so qlora is a method which uh, is about double quantization here you are fine tuning your models in a double quantized format double quantized format is your uh, uh, four bit uh, format so you may have so uh, when we downloaded the model from hugging face these weights were in fp16 format 16 bit format okay if we were fine tuning in lora this would be a 8 bit fine tuning the is the, the simplest way to remember the difference between lora and qlora is that uh, qlora would be fine tuning in four bit format lora would be fine tuning in eight bit format there is another difference here in qlora by default you target all the layers for fine tuning in lora however uh, you also have the uh, option where people uh, do not fine tune all the layers and they would actually select a subset of the layers okay so now let's go to towards the hyper parameters uh, these hyper parameters are very important in fine tuning and they control how fast your training gets completed how much uh, memory you are actually consuming uh, in um, your fine tuning effort and it also controls yeah so so uh, so these hyper parameters are, are what is going to determine how long you are going to find your how many epochs you are going to find your uh, what is going to be your learning rate uh, what is going to be the optimizer the the algorithm that is actually 
responsible for ensuring that you learn uh, that your model is is learning well okay uh, how fast are you going to log your training uh, information okay so all of these things will be there in our case per device train batch size is equal to 1 so batch size what is batch size batch size is uh, one how many rows would be present in one batch that is your batch size if i change this to 8 then it would mean that i am asking the model to uh then i'm asking the trainer to pick up eight to pick up eight different sequences and then pack it in one and uh, and then actually go for the training okay in in our case we are only going to use one because this demo is about being able to fine tune in uh, almost negligible resources okay and for fine tuning it in almost negligible resources we are going to be just using batch size it is going to it is going to slow us down but but we are working with a 3 billion parameter model and with just 1000 rows so we should still be fairly within time for doing this and then we have gradient accumulation steps what is gradient accumulation steps a uh, gradient accumulation steps is something which signifies how many steps does it take Uh, how many steps are you waiting before you are updating the uh, weights okay so when we say gradient accumulation step is equal to 1 it means that i am going to wait uh, for uh, one step on like i'll be updating the weights each step if i set this to 4 what it means is the i'll be uh, that i'll be storing that information in vram before i uh, before i go and update the weights okay and then we have optimizer is equal to page it at adam uh, 32 bit uh, this is an optimizer which was used in the qlora paper by tim detmers and we are using the same one this is what has been shown to work best with the uh, qlora and that's why we are uh, using it uh, this is this is called page it uh, adam optimizer okay so for now we are going to go with one if we have a lot of uh, vram uh, remaining uh, right now we are consuming 4 gig vram and this is a free collapse so this takes 15 gig vram so once we load the model based on that we will see what's going to happen uh, save steps is equal to 100 uh, sf trainer is also very useful in this way that it allows you to uh, save your model after a specific number of steps so when i say i'm going to save it in 100 steps it means that i am going to save the checkpoints like whatever is the state of the model whatever is the state of the model after that point i will be saying that i will be saving that since this is a qlora fine tune i will be saving the qlora adapters uh yeah logging steps logging steps is you can set it to 1 which tells you that uh, uh, what is the current loss like it will keep on updating information either after like every one step or every 10 steps this is the learning rate uh, learning rate is again how fast or slow we want to have the model learn this and usually we uh, play around with these hyper parameters and we understand that for a specific kind of range of model these kind of hyper parameters work best there is you should not memorize uh the information that specifically this kind of optimizer or this kind of batch size or this kind of learning rate are going to give you the answer it's up to you to uh find the right balance when you are working with a new model or a new dataset uh, specifically when we change the tasks and all these things we usually have to uh play around with it sometimes we usually you you can assume that you kind of find your model minimum 4 to 5 times uh before you know exactly what hyper parameters to go uh max steps is set to minus 1 what does it mean max steps is uh set to minus 1 because it overrides your epoch okay if what is an epoch so epoch means that uh one epoch means i will be going through the dataset once uh two epoch means i will be going through the dataset twice when we set max steps 
then it overrides the training epochs. Then epochs don't matter. Only what matters is steps. Okay. And then we have the warm up ratio. Warm up ratio is basically like uh, how much time does the model take to uh, kick start your training? Okay. And then we have your le uh, learning rate scheduler. So learning rate scheduler are of different types. We are going with constant as per the original Fedora paper. Uh, the uh, other variations also exist. For example, one of the most famous one of the most famous variations is cos cosine learning rate scheduler. So cosine learning rate scheduler means that you start with a specific learning rate. So if I was to use a cosine learning rate scheduler, what will happen is I will have a learning rate initially. Then it will be dropping off uh, as a cosine of rate. Constant means this is going to be the learning rate throughout the. So right now we are right now we are not trying to do this for a very specific kind of data set. This is just a kind of hello world kind of model, right? So I think we will be mostly fine if we just if we have an if we have a margin of error with the model, but. Uh, the constant learning rate is also something which is as per the orig original Fedora paper. Okay. Now you see this particular statement. This is nothing but just uh, whatever information we have added in the configuration. We are just coding that configuration. This is done. Again, max sequence length. We are reading of the trainer. The trainer is now ready. Uh, this map shows that all the 1000 data set, all the 1000 rows in the data set have now been loaded. We keep an eye on the GPU VRAM. So this has been designed, uh, uh, this particular notebook has been designed to be most efficient in terms of uh, uh, memory so that you guys are able to reproduce it without much cost. So let's see. Then this is the command to kickstart the trainer. Everything that we have said so far is now going to be tested. And let's see how does it go. When the model is being loaded, when the data set is being loaded into the VRAM. Okay, yeah. So if you remember, initially I talked about VonDB, which is like weights and biases like that. This is something which allows you to uh, visualize your, uh, uh, this is something which allows you to Visualize your training runs. Okay. I have also added that in the notebook so that not only do you guys see uh, just the results of the training, but you're also able to learn how to be connected to the visualization ecosystem. So weights and biases is a fantastic library, and there is there are lots of things that can be done with it. There can be an entire course to understand how to make use of weights and biases. But for this specific uh, lesson, we are just focusing on how to use weights and biases to perform visualization for our training. Okay. It will require an API key to identify who you are. Okay. And uh, if you click on this, this will show you an API key, which you can copy, copy and paste here. If you are new to weights and biases, it may ask you to quickly create a new account. If you already have an account, it will just open that up and it will start. So it is loaded because our model is very uh, small. Our data set is very small. So everything is going to be kicked very kick, kick started like very fast. Uh, as you can now see that the model has now been loaded in four bits. And uh, instead of 3.7 gigabit of RAM, we are now taking 7.9 gigabit of VRAM. So uh, originally I created it like this because uh, some of the uh, because some some folks have just a, a 10, 10 gig VRAM or an 8 gig VRAM or 3080, an RTX 3080 or RTX 3060 available with them. So uh, typically what we have is that we, we also want them to be able to run this uh, Hello World kind of tutorial. And this, it has been created like this. Yeah. So, now it is going to continue. And if you want to observe these runs, the way to observe these runs should be to 
go and um, open the weights and biases cases. Uh, you should also be able to run to it directly. So view run at this particular location. It is giving you the URL. You should click it. It will open that run for you right now. For me, it has started picking uh, up this information here, and with every step of the way, it is uh, now updating this information. As per this specific tutorial, it is something which is going to take some time uh, because we wanted it to be quite memory efficient. It's not going to take 32 minutes or something. However, however, we can try to speed it up as well. Uh, should we take a question or uh, can we take it afterwards? Yeah, I think uh, let me just quickly uh, speed it up slightly by going with that size scale. Yeah, got it. OK. Yeah. Because originally it was for only 8 gigs. I think we have some RAM to, some VRAM to spare. Just in the free collab itself. As you can see, previously we had 1,000 steps. So now since we have created a batch of two instead of one, we now have just have 500 steps. And the time should likewise be reduced. But the VRAM requirements, as now you can see, have been increased. Now the VRAM requirement is 12.3. Uh, OK. All, all right. So there is one question like, suppose I have a PDF for CSV data. How do I find unit? Is there any format to follow? Yeah, so as I mentioned, right, so when you say CSV or uh, uh, so every, everyone actually asks this question in this format, but uh, typically the right question to ask is what task do I want to fine tune on? Okay, if you're clear about the task that you want to fine tune on, then you would be able to uh, go and process the data that you have in that specific kind of task format. Okay. For example, if you have to create a chatbot, let's just say you have to create a chatbot that just uh, has some conversations. Okay. So this is how the data is prepared. Here. So uh, this is this is like one column that contains your entire conversation between two folks. With SF Trainer, I showed you that like you had a single column, right? But if you start going from like for uh, format to format, so for example, like let me show you some prompt completion one. Yeah. So this is just uh, yeah, this is just for prompt mm, code. Okay, code is good. So yeah, let's go here. So we have instruction, we have this format here. On the right hand side, we have instruction, like basically something that you will add in your prompt. And on the left hand side, we have output, is how, how you would like the model to respond. Uh, why was this data prepared in this way? This data was prepared in this way because this is how we actually want to interact with the model. Suppose you wanted to build a code, suppose you wanted to build a, a coding model. Okay. Uh, you need to ask yourself the next question. Am I going to use it inside my uh, uh, PS code, just like how people use GitHub Copilot? Or am I going to chat it with chat with it like ChatGPT? Okay. If you have to interact with it like how you interact with ChatGPT, then usually the one format that you should follow is instruction response kind of format. So you have something which is like an instruction and then a section after the data is out. Okay. Uh, we will take example. Let's take a random document as example. Okay. Suppose there is this document which uh, contains, okay, suppose there is this documentation about the library. Okay. 
okay and you wanted to just chat with the documentation in terms of you were asking this question if i have to do this and this what is the way to do that okay and if you ask such a question then the best results would come when you have processed your data set into that form that you have actually extracted that information from your document and put it inside the uh, instruction response kind of thing okay that is when you that is how you get the best result how how suppose you have like a huge data set and uh, there is nothing specific you know you just want to see whether this particular model can memorize the information of my document and whether i can just randomly chat with it or something then just go with this particular format the one that i showed you initially so as you can see is a single single uh, column the first chunk from a document would come here the second chunk from a document would come here no need to put any instruction no need to put uh, follow any kind of format just divide your document into as many chunks as possible and then put it here okay when it comes to csv then csv is a different kind of thing because with csv you are talking about tables right so you may want to uh present the csv in text so uh, this this model is completely about text and that's how you will be fine tuning it as well. so you will have to again enter the information of csv in text form if it is comma separated it will be comma separated if it is tab separated if it has like multiple commas however are you separating the information that information will be there the answer is pretty straight forward uh you just chunk your entire document one by one and put it in different rows best results would come in exactly how you want to use it you want to use it to chat then put information in the data set for fine tuning just like how you would chat if you want to use it in copilot then for copilot you need to put in prompt completion format so not sure if it will so prompt completion but uh, I think you may need Albert out. Yes. So this is something that you can see that this is a prompt which has been mentioned. So this could be uh, what you have written as a comment in your Visual Studio Code file, okay? And this is the completion also mentioned as canonical solution. So when you leave Uh, so when you typed this much in your visual studio code uh, file and then you are expecting it to auto complete then it will auto complete with something like this as you can see there is nothing like human user assistant or something just basically it is just auto completing this information from here to here that's all this is that's all that is happening okay okay uh, so one more question is regarding the trade off so the trade off with quantization is accuracy versus memory vram of the gpu question mark see as per tim like what what tim demonstrated i, I could show you tweets from tim tim and as i and as i told you right that we are actually performing the same thing uh, there is a huge effort which we are running in open source i'm i'm also one of the uh, contributors there uh, the effort is to actually determine this exact same thing this is what we call ablation study and let me just show you the repo probably like that kind of thing is outside of the uh, framework of this tutorial but because this question is like this so i'll just tell you this this is a fine tune study and uh, this is the most uh, state of the art effort to actually determine the answer to that question as you can see this is comparing qlora uh lora full fine tuning and determine and the results that will be determined is comprehensive analysis of difference in performance of qlora lora and full fine tuning okay so i am also a uh, part of this effort and uh, 
as per tim the, the person uh, as per tim the author who wrote qlora book with qlora you should be able to achieve state of the art results just comparable to full fine tuning okay but many of the fine tuning experts who uh, who actually fine tuned including me observed that there was like a minor difference 1 to 3% kind of difference that would come in the benchmark performance like when we when we fine tune using full fine tuning and we compared on the same benchmark we usually saw like 1 1% of some trade off uh but as per the paper like as per the design of qlora it's not supposed to trade off accuracy with vera actually qlora is kind of uh, unbelievable in that way but it is supposed to reduce the entire cost of fine tuning to just use qlora for your fine tuning and if and if you if you were to go on um, if i was to show you the ring face leaderboard for uh, fine tuning models you will see that on open llm leaderboard you have qlora models at the top as well so don't think that qlora is basically something which is like uh, an approach to same vram but it does not give you. as you can see see this is platypus qlora llama 70 okay so it's at the fourth number all of these are different models but you can see that uh, this particular model is actually standing at rank 4 uh, on this specific leader if you if you were to like continuously keep on going down you will find other uh, uh, other qlora models as well I, i'm also aware that john durbin the person who created the aeroboros series initially like when he when he brought out the qlora models they also topped the charts so this is something to be considered and uh, that's why because of this uh, because of this confusion we actually are trying to identify and get the answer in this pentium study there is an entire discord dedicated to this and like a huge all, all the heavy hitters and this like uh, amazing people are working on these things so yeah that's the that's the long answer for your short question uh so one last question is uh is there any need for fine tuning i mean how is it different from drag uh okay rag right right yeah, yeah. so with rag your model does not okay let me give you another example do you know the best open source coding model that we have right now the best open source coding model yeah so you have this big code model skater board hmm and if you see uh, the 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 four models that you see at the top here okay all of these are fine tunes and uh, the the release from meta for code coding model code llama is present here at the sixth one 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 uh. at the seventh rank we had the uh, find we, we had the release model from open source okay this 34b instruct is also fine tune it's it's released by meta but it is a fine tune of their own base model okay and then all of these models are actually fine tunes so yes fine tuning is a way to uh, let your model learn to represent something better okay think of it like this in pre training you have given it the entire world's knowledge okay and you have given it everything and it has just learned to uh identify what is going to be the next most likely token based on how you have uh based on how you have pre trained it okay in fine tuning you make it you, you make it learn to talk in a specific way specifically when we talk about instruction uh data set right so all of you know about chat gpt right so the chat gpt that that you wrote that you actually use is itself a fine tuned model uh they have fine tuned it uh in two layers 
uh, on their base model. First, they have done a simple chat finding, and then they've added an additional RLHF finding. Okay. So now let's compare it to us as a user, comparing it to RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. Retrieval Augmented Generation is something that allows you to, if the information is searchable in the document, if we know that the information is present in the document, okay, that we are working with. And uh, if it is searchable easily, uh, if it is not something which requires like a chain reasoning or something, if it is searchable easily, like you, uh, you just look for keyword based connection or semantic similarity, and you're able to find a similarity and you fetch that particular uh, section of uh, text. And just using that particular section of text as context, your LLM is now able to answer. Okay. Then in those cases, RAG is the best. And you should and you should not try to do the same thing with Find Your. However, suppose the pre-trained model that you're using is uh, making some mistakes while it is answering the uh, retrieval augmented generation thing. Okay. And you've tried other things. You've tried prompting in various ways. You've tried you've tried giving very good uh, uh, examples to enable in-context learning of how to specifically answer. But you've seen that the model does not have a very strong instruction following. Okay. You, you have seen that the model often like uh, makes certain kind of mistakes. Okay. Or, or if you want to just censor it in a specific way where you, where you don't want to like use certain style. For example, you want it to be friendly, but it is not that friendly. Uh, and you, you are not able to control that even with prompting. Fine tuning allows you to make those adjustments to your model. If you wanted to strictly follow a format, strictly follow a kind of syntax, strictly follow a kind of style behavior, then in those places, fine tuning is the way to be. Uh, specifically in the places where, uh, uh, like either as just as a chat fine tune, simply like how we are doing in this tutorial or as an RLHF, like reinforcement learning via human feedback. There are like other web methods of reinforcement learning as well, but yeah, so using these two methods that you will. So now you can see that uh, this is our model. Like initially when it started seeing new data, since this is a 3 billion parameter model. So this is usually dumber than your bigger models. Uh, and, it, and it initially saw like in each and every row because the data set was not prepared very well. I used a ready-made data set, but uh, in each and every row, the language was changing. The expectation of the model for each and every row was like uh, changing a lot. So it kept on, increasing in uh, uh, loss initially. But then once that in, that thing came to pass, the loss started converging. So let's go and see. Yeah, it is just seven minutes remaining. So we were able to speed it up. Uh, we are consuming around 12.3 gig data. Yes. So anyway, like I wanted to uh, talk about the next things as well quickly, just to show you. So while that thing is happening, let me introduce other sections so that we can finish this thing on time as well. Uh, once this training is done, right, uh, we, we are fine tuning the model on the information. Then we want to save the model. Okay. And saving the model is like model to save. So we just use uh, these uh, uh, commands for the same. This is the command used to save the model. This, uh, and then uh, when we say model to save dot save pre trained outputs, it will create a new folder called outputs. I'm not showing you the folders yet. Let me show you that. So there are two, there are two folders. This, this is the default Google Colab folder sample data. So ignore it. You have two folders here mainly. One is results, one is one DB. One DB is something which is which contains the information of your training losses and everything. And this is what uh, is uh, uh, being synced with your model fine tune here. 
and results. Results as your checkpoints which have been saved during different sections. If you remember, one of the parameters that you set here, one of the one of the values that you set here was save steps is equal to hundred. Okay, so after every hundred step, it is actually saving the model. So this is five hundred steps of total fine tune. So it will uh, be saving that as soon as it hits four hundred, it will have checkpoint four hundred there. Just ten seconds. Right now, if I was to refresh it, close it, and yeah, you can see four hundred is there, right? So, yeah. So in uh, so this is extremely useful because uh, what happens during fine tuning is like this is this is an extremely short fine tuning, but I have I have uh, but I fine tune models for over eighty eighty five hours as well. Uh, I've done full fine tunes that have also required multiple uh, GPUs and all. So in those cases, what ends up happening is that uh, I have observed that several times, like when I'm working with a specific GPU or set of GPUs, there can be some kind of failure. I may be suddenly running out of memory. There can be some issue on the end of the uh, provider, or if you are doing a local run, it. Some some hazard or some issue can also happen locally on your end. So being able to save these checkpoints uh, like this is a huge boom in the sense that it allows you to resume. For example, right now if I was to right now if I was to uh, accidentally lose this GPU, right, I will still have checkpoint number four. The so next time I can using the SF trainer. I can resume from 400, and then I will just have to repeat this portion of the run, just this much. Just these 20 steps, 21 steps would need to be repeated. Okay. Uh, when we say model to save, it will create a new folder called outputs. Okay. Uh, I'm not doing it right now because it is just completing the run, and uh, like just three or four minutes. After that, what we are going to do is we have we we have uh, fine tuned the model. We we are finished. Finding the model, and uh, we want to talk to it, right? So these checkpoints, these checkpoints are not full weights. These checkpoints are what we call adapters. So uh, this is an this is again an extremely extremely useful uh, thing that we get from these models. Is if we, if you are doing QLoRa, you don't need to. Uh, uh, if you if you're doing QLoRa, you don't need to change, save the full weights every time. You only save the check. You only save the adapters. Okay, uh, an adapter is something which can be added over the model, and uh, it will automatically give you results similar to basically the uh, the combined model. So with QLoRa and LoRa fine tuning, this is an additional advantage. We get. We get we save the information in terms of adapters. Adapters are usually very, usually very small. For seven billion, you get around one fifty billion, one fifty million, oh, sorry, one fifty MB weight adapter. And for uh, your uh, uh, three billion, it should be even lesser, around hundred or something. Okay. So with this command, what we'll be doing is from the outputs folder because we have saved our latest checkpoint in outputs folder. From the outputs folder, we will be loading our model. Okay. Uh, once you load the loaded the model, you want to talk to the model. So this cell is there for you to talk to the model. Okay. And uh, then this is push to hub. So push to hub is something that allows you to. And this is also where we this this is also why we perform the initial hugging face login and all initially here like. At this at this step, because once you find you your model, you also want to, to easily push it to get up. Okay, so I will just toy run open the. I just name it something like hello world, you to you to find. Yeah. So once this is done. Uh, we we are just about to end our uh, fine tune as well. So once that thing is done, 
we will be able to save the model and then have a quick chat. Yeah, fine tuning is done now. This particular part is done. Uh, we save the model here. This is a very small model. So that's why everything is happening very fast. But typically with bigger parameter models, these things can take slight, slight bit of time. So now that uh, I've, I've added outputs here, if I was to just close this and just check, you can see there is a new output folder here. Okay, and adapter is present here. If you were to want to read what is in the adapter files, you will see that it contains this information. What was your base model? Okay. And on this base model, what were the training parameters? Like this particular alpha was used for uh, LoRa, this particular dropout was used, this was a rank, and what were the target modules? Okay. So uh, this, this, any, this information is present in the adapter. It allows it allows for our uh, module loader configs to easily use, easily load the model. Okay, now both of these things are done. Now let's try to chat with our model. So as you can see that I just asked you the question, hi, I'm token vendor. Token vendor is basically the name that I go by for my own, uh, uh, presence on the internet and uh, this and I'm having it reply. So it is replying, hello, I'm a system. How can I assist you today? Okay. And I can talk to it even more. I right? was to just. I was to copy. And paste. I can ask it another question. Uh, how is everything like in a, uh, any kind of random question just to throw it out? Okay. So uh, in the, this intro part, we may have to change. You can also not expect a lot of intelligence out of a 3 billion parameter model, just fine tune with 1,000 1, uh, uh, lines of data set. OK, yeah. So now, since we changed it, it's now responding differently. I'm sorry, but I'm not sure what you're asking. Can you please provide more context or clarify your question? I'll just um, I'll just ask it this question from what is the answer to like and this is from uh, Hitchhiker's Wait to the Galaxy. Let's see if it knows the answer. That is forty two. Yeah, it knows the answer. So a small um, three billion parameter model trained in just like fifteen to twenty minutes of time is able to chat intelligently. With it. Uh, most people think it costs a lot. It takes a lot of effort. There's like a huge entry barrier now. It's not really. So we are we are barely uh, using. Uh, so right now the even the fine tuning parameters are loaded here. So it's it shows us 12.3 gig VRAM, but in reality it should have taken just four gig or five gig of VRAM to just chat with this model. Now that we are satisfied with the quality of this model to some extent, we go and push it on the hub. So when I click on, when I just run this command, it's going to uh, whatever is the loaded state of the model, it is going to push the model to. So as I told you, this this is the size of the adapter. It is one. It is just eighty five MB for uh, your. Uh, that's the LLM. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So now this thing is done. If I was to go on my hugging face on my profile, you can see that Orca Mini 3B 
Hello World Key Lora FT is present here and it has been pushed just less than a minute ago. So this is the model. Now our model is on the hub. And if you want, you can talk to it. Uh, Tarun, are you on the call? Um, I'm not sure if Tarun is here. But anyway, yeah, that's the uh, tutorial. And I think these, this notebook should be made available to you. Whatever edits I've made, uh, I think I, I'll just, I've shared an older version of the notebook, but whatever edits I've made here, I will also share that with you guys. You should be able to access this. Uh, is Varun on the call? Oh, okay, okay. I think Varun is saying he got disconnected. So yeah, so the uh, so that was the tutorial, guys. And uh, if there are any questions, please drop it in the comments. I think I'll be disconnecting now as well. And uh, I think this notebook will be shared with you guys. So hopefully you are uh, able to reproduce this run on your site and uh, okay. okay let's wait for tarun to join in he's saying that he's joining again Yeah, there. Okay, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah sure. If there are any questions, please uh, drop it in the chat. Meanwhile, uh, as uh, Tarun is joining this, can you give some tips for Fester who wants to build a career in AI ML field? Yeah, so typically what I do from my side is uh, like as a fresher, if, if you're just starting from scratch, if you, if you, if you don't have any software engineering career beforehand, then uh, best to uh, typically what, what we recommend to everyone is to is for everyone to go and start with a fast.ai course by Jeremy Howard. Uh, Jeremy Howard is a, a great instructor. And uh, and, uh, and with that hi. specific course, like, yeah, hi, hi, Bishu, sorry. So there was a power cut and my Wi-Fi got disconnected. Yeah, it's okay. okay. Uh, sorry for the delay. It's okay. It's okay. So yeah, uh, actually, I was able to demonstrate the entire run, and uh, yeah, I was I just was answering. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was watching it from mobile while I got disconnected. Okay. okay. So yeah. So I was just uh, uh, answering this question about uh, tips for a fresher. So I'll just say that if, that if you're that if you're starting from scratch, probably the best to start with a practical thing. If you have academic interests, uh, then you can take a longer route where you go and learn other stuff like the algebra calculus. Now, however, if you are somebody who likes to build things, play around, just engineer things, hack stuff, uh, not really focused on going through uh, research or, or trying to contribute in research, then no need to worry about 
going through all the basics of uh, linear algebra calculus and uh, and trying to create a four to five year curriculum before you actually start contributing in the industry uh, you are a person who can look at problem statements and identify something can be done about a certain problem and ask that specific question based on that specific question there is always a shorter route where you can trim that particular field of the fact of uh, uh, going through all the layers one by one and just go and directly see exactly like, what you want to do how you want to uh, actually tackle it like this this is an approach which i recommend here and uh, uh, once you once you do these things and actually build something contribute something to the world do something for yourself like once you push your own models once you once you make your own data sets once you solve a problem for somebody then the uh, then i think most of the things could automatically become clear to you if you have academic interest then you can definitely go and go deeper but if you just want to like build stuff then no need to go and do everything like basics and start from some, start from something like fast or ai codes where uh, you uh, focus on nlp uh, stuff if you are interested in the image uh, the computer vision stuff as well fast or ai codes contains both go and cover that as well Uh, um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing the resources and as well as uh, the fine tuning script. So there is one last question uh, which I saw in the yeah. comment. Uh, is there any need to use bits and bytes configuration for model? Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, right, that uh, the okay, is there any needs to use bits and bytes configuration for model? I think the latest. uh pft library implicitly loads the model in double quantized form okay but uh, uh but bits and bytes library is used to double quantize the model like when i created the notebook at that point it it was a very new approach and pft still hasn't integrated it yet okay if you want to avoid using it if you, like if you go and check the pft library in hugging face if you are able to find the a uh, method to load double quantize without using bits and bytes library probably that that is that is that is recommended uh, however if you don't want to use anything that might be broken that might be too new just go and uh, uh, use this existing configuration that i have shared uh okay so i don't see any more questions yeah Uh, thank you for answering in detail really appreciate it this was for the question is there any need for fine tuning so this was the reply for that comment uh, thank you okay uh, so i guess it's already time up and uh, this was all about module 8 fine tuning uh, llms and thank you abhishek for uh, accepting the invitation and uh, sharing your expertise best tips and tricks to get started with fine tuning and as well as uh, to make the notebook very user friendly uh because as of now we see there are models uh, of the different variants and uh, right. to keep this notebook more beginner friendly uh, i really appreciate the hard work uh, can you please okay so someone is telling about can you please speak about <laughs> that is a that is a different uh, <laughs> i i think somebody else might be covering blank chain or llama index right so, yeah so um, today is module 8 then uh, just next week module 10 you will be learning more about lang chain and uh, then uh, you will also be learning about llama index uh, the speaker for lang chain will be ayush thakur and uh, the speaker for llama index will be ravi teja who is an open source contributor over there so i guess that this question will be answered during those sessions and uh, yeah yeah once again thank you so much for accepting the invitation and uh, sharing your expertise um, do you have any closing thoughts no just just that uh, uh, start thinking of using use cases and start building your own models i have seen a lot i've seen lots of individuals who do not have the same uh, uh, amount of prep or same amount of background with llms or ai like they have not really worked in the industry for several years and uh, i see a lots of people in the discords Where where we are working on cutting edge stuff, where people who have just started working on this day, these things like 15 days earlier, are building their own models and stuff. So play around, hack around, and uh, have fun. Yeah, that's all I have. 
okay so thank you so much again uh, yeah we'll meet again in the module 9 on transfer learning and multi model uh, learning with llms uh, until then happy learning have a good day thank you yeah, thank, thank you, you everyone